Hi, I'm Amir Hossein Mirza Bozorg and I'm going to talk about defining arbitrary distributed loading by deload subroutine in Abacus. This is the table of content of this video. First, I talk about introduction, then I talk about example of blast loading, then I will talk about example of moving load. Deload subroutine is one of the Abacus standard subroutines and it is used for defining distributed loads. distributed body forces and distributed surface loads. Deload subroutine can be used to define the variation of the distributed load magnitude as a function of position, time, element number, load integration point number, and it will be called at each load integration point for each element base or surface based non-uniform distributed load definition during a stress analysis. Deload subroutine is used for defining mechanical loads in a stress analysis. Deload subroutine cannot be used in mode-based procedures to describe the time variation of the load. You know that in Abacus, there are some steps that use mode-based procedures. These steps are linear dynamic steps. Um, these steps solve dynamic problems linearly and they are in the category of a small perturbation steps that use eigenmodes for solving dynamic problems linearly. Deload subroutine ignores any amplitude references that may appear with the associated step definition or non-uniform distributed load definition. It means that if you define a surface load or body load and you use deload subroutine for defining this load and in Abacus CAE you set an amplitude definition for it the Abacus solver will ignore the amplitude definition in the Abacus CAE Now I want to talk about the example of blast loading. You can see the result of a stress analysis, a dynamic stress analysis that is done by using dynamic implicit step. I said that deload subroutine is one of the Abacus standard subroutines and for using deload you are limited to use abacus standard steps for nonlinear dynamic analysis abacus standard has a step that is named dynamic implicit for this project I have used this step. Now I want to talk about its 
modeling for modeling the effect of blast loading on a steel plate I have used some data of this paper modeling of perforation failure in fiber metal laminate subjected to high impulsive blast loading the subject of this paper is about a fiber metal laminate or a FML. But I modeled a steel plate. You can see the geometry of this project. Because of the symmetry, a quarter of the geometry is modeled in this paper. And I modeled my project like this paper. And I modeled a quarter of the geometry like this paper. The symmetric boundary condition are defined in these edges. The only difference between this paper and my model is the definition of the material. The subject of this paper is a FML, but the subject of my model is a steel plate. Here, the loading definition is explained and this sophisticated function that is a function of time and position is used in my model. This function has a time-dependent part and a position-dependent part. And by using D-load subroutine, you can define such a sophisticated functions. Now I want to show you my model. This is my model, a quarter of a steel plate, and damage behavior and plastic behavior is defined for this plate. You can see that I have defined ductile damage and shear damage and I have defined plastic behavior as a function of a strain rate I have defined a dynamic implicit step that can solve nonlinear dynamic problems. And in step one, I have defined a distributed load, a distributed pressure load by using Deload subroutine. Here we set magnitude to 1 and in the subroutine we will define the sophisticated function. And the solver will ignore the amount of 
magnitude here. This is the mesh of the FE model. You can see that in this partition, the size of elements are very small because the damage and perforation will occur in this partition. Here you can see the results. You can see that in frame 5, the perforation has occurred. These are the stress waves. I said that I have modeled a quarter of the main problem. Now I want to show you the results of the complete model. Now, I want to show you the second example. This example is about the implementation of a moving load by using deload subroutine. Now, I want to show you its model. This is the model for defining moving load. And in this model, I have used dynamic implicit step 2. And I have defined a surface loading. This is the mesh of the FE model. And I want to show you the results. I set the results on U2. That is the Y component of the displacement. You can see the movement of the load.
in a step module, I have defined history output of the Y component displacement of these points. Set 1, set 2, and set 3. U2 component for set 1, U2 component for set 2, and U2 component for set 3. The history outputs are here. U2 for set 1, U2 for set 2, and U2 for set 3. And these curves show the movement of the load. Now I want to show you my codes. This is the subroutine of the blast loading. You can see that here I have defined several functions for several parts of the problem. You can see that there are three conditions for the position domain and two conditions for time domain. And the combination of these conditions lead to six combined conditions. And here there are six combined conditions. And this subroutine is written for defining moving load. You can contact me by using Telegram or WhatsApp or by sending email for me. And these are our services. We can help you to complete your abacus models and take exact and true results from your abacus models. And one of our services is producing a special video for you. For example, a special video for instructing a technique or solving a problem in Abacus. Thank you so much.